Hey, Joe here from Home Studio Corner. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I like to record and come up with background vocal parts. A lot of productions can be improved with some well-placed BGVs. Um, I like to think of them as another keyboard part, um, some sort of a synth pad, but it's done with vocals, so it adds a different amount of character, and to me, they're just really interesting. Sure, they can be cheesy, sure, they can be overdone, uh, but if you are a vocalist, you are a singer, and you're not currently exploring the ways you can add in even the simplest of background vocal parts to your productions, you might be missing out on something really special. So I'm going to show you the way that I go about doing it, and then you should try on your own and let, come back here, leave a comment, let me know how it goes. So I posted over on Facebook. I said, quick, give me a chord progression for a video idea. As I wanted to just do this from scratch without using a song I'd already produced. And JJ Shrick comes through with a one, two minor, four, five progression. JJ, thank you. Actually, I had coffee with JJ the other day here in Nashville, and he's delightful. So um, that's the chord progression I did. I decided to go in the key of D, because my guitar's in drop D tuning. And I just quickly recorded this. So this is in 6-8 time signature, which is just something I pulled out of the air. Um, and the chords are D major, E minor, G, A. So here's that. So we'll have a reference point. We're going to create a background vocal part for this chord progression. If I can get it to play. Come on. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what I like to do when I'm doing background vocals, first of all, let's before I do that, let's add in our background vocal tracks. I just want to show you exactly how I do it. So BGV uh, is the name of the track, and we're going to add in usually at least eight is kind of my go-to. If I'm feeling frisky, I'll add in something like 10. Uh, these are all audio tracks. I want them to be purple. Uh, they're all mono, no preset. They're going to come in on input three, which is the microphone I'm speaking into. Let's go boom and create those. So now I've got these. And the next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that these go inside my BGV folder right here, which has a corresponding background vocal bus right here. So everything's routed through my background vocal bus. Um, I'll show you that in just a second. Um, and then the other thing I do before I even start recording is I get my panning in order. So the way I usually do background vocals 90% of the time, if I find a part that I like, I record it twice. One goes pan to the left, one gets pan to the right. Occasionally, if there's like a bass line that I really just wanna record once, it'll go up the middle. But for the most part, this is kinda of how I think about it. So if I've got eight tracks down here, it's actually only four background vocal parts. And if I want more, I can always duplicate and add on. So now I'm just going through and I'm recording this one and then moving on to the next one and recording that. Let me grab my headphones so I can actually do this. Uh, make sure I can hear myself. Great. Okay. So the first thing I think about is this is a pretty simple progression that's that's rising. So it goes one, two, four, five. So an easy place to start if you have nothing else is to just hum or sing. I'm going to use ooze in this video. Uh, or maybe ahs. Is to just ah the bass line. So let's do that real quickly. This is just going, starts in D. Bum. <laughs> Bum, bum, bum. Those are the notes. Bum, 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 bum. I'm not going to sing them that low because you'll never hear them in the mix. I'm going to sing it up higher, uh, an octave up. And let's just see if that sounds right. You, there's, you have to be okay with doing some stupid sound and stuff because you'll eventually get to the good stuff. So let's just try that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Uh, uh, uh. See, I already got the notes wrong. Uh, 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 uh. One, two, three. Always have that repeat, but we're gonna we're just gonna do this phrase so I don't bore you to tears. Let's see if that sounds okay. Okay, I always like to go ahead and EQ my bus for my background vocals because I don't want them to be nearly that full. I could mess around with moving the mic and all that, but I'd rather just EQ it because that's how it's gonna sound in the mix. Get rid of the lows, scoop out some mids, make it sound kind of nice and breathy, background vocal E. Uh... Great. 
Uh, and then I'll also go ahead and send this bus to my plate reverb that I always have in my mix sessions. That probably needs to be tuned too, but that's not what we're talking about today. So let's just say I like that. Let me just record a second one to get the stereo thing going, and then we can go from there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's kind of fun. So this is kind of what I would call lowest common denominator background vocals. It can work wonderfully. There's, no, I'm not dogging it. It's just, it's to just sing the bass line is very obvious, right? I'm gonna sing the bass line, maybe an octave up. Great, it's just, it's not super interesting yet, but this could be the good foundation for some really interesting background vocal parts. So what else could we sing on top of this to kind of make this more chords than just the uh, bass part? Of just some, so one thing I remember from music theory in college is you don't want all the notes moving in the same direction. So if some can move up and down, this one's only moving up. If I could have one that moves down and up, could be more interesting. So uh, let's try a fifth up. Uh, 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 uh. That first part works. Uh, uh, uh. So I'm going, ba -da, ba -da, which counter is kind of a counter rhythm to the, the bass notes are kind of going up. This one's going up, going down, going down, then going down again. So let's just record that. That might be cool. From the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, great to be if you can just sit in front of the computer like I'm doing to do this you can watch the blobs on the screen and make sure you're you're stopping singing at the same spot um, saves you a lot of time later in editing all right let's do the second one, one two, three, four, five, six. so that's kind of cool we've got this So if you're curious about notes, the first part is just D, E, G, A. And the second part is, I believe, let's see, it's A down to G, and then D down to C sharp. So I'm singing the fifth of the note, then the third of the note, and then the, f and the one of the note, uh, the four of the note, and then the, anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm singing, sorry. I don't need to try to explain it that way. So now we've got something that's kind of interesting. <laughs> One thing, if you can add in a little cool vibey slide in there occasionally, it just makes it more interesting. You can't really do that with keyboards. It just sounds cool, especially in that reverb, if we play just the background vocals. It, it, I don't know, I kind of like it sometimes. Um, so what else can we do here? Do we, can we do anything else with just the ah parts? So now we've basically done, we've got a two-part harmony, right? We could add a third part, and sometimes that works well. Sometimes that starts to get too cheesy, too, you know, barbershop quartet sounding. Um, and I don't really hear anything that's missing as far as just the basic ahs to go along with the chords. <laughs> Part of me likes to, if I'm going to do a third part, it's not going to be the what the traditional third harmony, but kind of these dissonant notes. So let me grab my guitar. If, you know, on that E minor, maybe I'll sing an F sharp. So we're going. So maybe a.
So that'd be interesting. I'll sing a third of the chord. I'm sorry, a nine of the chord for the first three, and then just land on the A at the end, which is the root. Um, so be ah ah ah. That's hard to sing because I'm saying it's more dissonant, but it's really cool. Um, when the when the D chord is playing, I'm singing an E, and when the E minor chord is playing, I'm singing an F sharp, which is extra dissonant. Might not work. Might need to go up an octave. Let's just try it real quick right here. One, two. Ah, uh, that's my note. One, two, three, four, five. Ah. Uh, okay, that was kind of cool. That's my note there. Let me just punch that in real quick. Ah, ah, ah. I'll just leave it there. Let me record a second one and see how we feel about it. Uh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, ah, that's my note. So by the end, we've got four voices singing that A. So that may be too much, but it might work. Let's just, let's listen. I have, I've lost perspective. So my other thought is occasionally doing octaves, just singing the same thing up or down an octave can be really cool. And it kind of breaks the rule of singing the same thing again um, and moving in the same direction, but it's the exact same part an octave up and the octave up might be better. We might ditch this part. So I'm going to try an octave up. Uh, It'll have to be falsetto, but we'll see if we can make it work. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's a different note, so instead of having four people singing this note, uh, uh, it'll be, uh, uh, and it might be too high, <laughs> but we'll try it and see how it works. One, two, three. Uh, what's the note again? kind of cool. I can probably only do it one more time. <laughs> so let's do it. What's the first note again? Man, with the reverb in there, that sounds so good. I love that. So this is the first, ironically, these higher parts, harder parts are a little too loud. So I'm just gonna bring both of those down just a little bit. And what if we get rid of the third part and just have the high ones? No, I like that one. I think these high parts need to be quieter. So we're kind of mixing as we go. And so we've created something, right? Could you play this with an organ patch or a synth pad or something like that? Absolutely. And it'd be cool. But the fact that these are voices, they can do, they can get timbres and things that you can't maybe get out of a keyboard. Um, and it's just something that's going to be completely unique to this song. No one else will have this exact part and certainly not this exact voice on their music. And that's kind of fun too. Um, so let's listen to, you might want to hear it without the guitar. Let's hear what we got. Here's what we made in, you know, what was this? 15 minutes of just trial and error and starting with really basic parts. And, and well, let's just listen to this and I'll say a couple more things. Ah, 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 
So this, aside from being kind of cool harmonies, and we're kind of smitten with it right now, or at least I am because I've just done it, um, it's not the most exciting, it's just chords, right? It's the same thing a keyboard player would play. If I were to take this further, um, and maybe a future video I will, um, I would want to add in something different, some counterpoint, different melodies. Just as an example, let me just hit play and I'll sing over that so you can get an idea. Something like that, where it's not singing the exact same timing, moving notes at the exact same time. It's something different altogether. That's maybe, it could still be ah, but it's it's a counterpoint, rhythmically and melodically, to what's happening there. That's another idea. I don't do it every time, because honestly, this if, this if I was producing this, I would say, hey, that's really cool, let's move on. Um, but if it wasn't feeling right, that would be the next place I would turn. If I can't find just straight chords that work, then maybe... It's a combination of different melodic parts that kind of all kind of mush together to become this really interesting part. Okay, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this. Go make some background vocals and come back and tell me how it went. And if you haven't signed up to my email list, you need to. So you stay up to date with all my latest videos, get access to uh, information about my courses and things like that, like the VIP membership. That's super dope. Uh, and also, if you want to get my recording cheat sheet, the only way to get that is to sign up to my email list by going to recordingcheatsheet.com. It'll give you a bunch of advice like this uh, on how to make your recordings better, which will make your mixes better, your productions better, your releases better, your music better. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.